Good morning, everybody. It's right now two minutes after 10. Savannah Mayor Van Johnson giving an update on the city's coronavirus uh, response. Let's go there live right now to hear what he has to say. 19 and our continuing mission to keep Savannah safe in the midst of this horrific viral storm that continues to hover over our nation, our state, and our beloved city. As of this moment, we have 154 confirmed cases of and five deaths attributed to COVID-19 in Chatham County, which is the most in the Coastal Health District. We believe that there are more deaths out there, so we expect these numbers to rise. At this point, we are still working towards, and we've had some moderate success in preventing an outright up outbreak that would ultimately overwhelm our current medical capabilities. We also understand from the data that more testing brings on more positive cases. My most recent challenge has been to convince the state to release the confirmed data by zip code. The information will provide us a much better snapshot, a much better idea of the number of confirmed cases in Savannah proper and any concentration of these confirmed cases. We can then provide much better information and education to people in these areas. Governor Kemp's shelter in place order is still in effect, requiring that everyone stays home to lower the risk of coronavirus for everyone unless going to work, shopping for essential items, or exercising at a safe distance from others. Last week, I asked Savannians to wear face coverings when going out of their homes. I have been very pleased to see many people doing just this. Many of our citizens have utilized their creative skills and this creativity is evident in seeing some of the face coverings that we've all seen. Many other citizens have graciously sewn or provided face coverings or masks for those who do not have them and I thank them for that. In accordance with the governor's order, city staff has been working with other agencies to monitor and enforce compliance with this order. As many of you are aware, the Savannah Police Department is using its drone fleet to enforce social distancing measures with a pre-recorded message. This message simply reminds people to stay at least six feet away from others. Officers will continue to fly these drones in specific areas where there is an issue and in accordance with federal law. Our operators are trained professionals with FAA pilot licenses. This week also, our mounted horse unit and foot patrol officers continue to remind our citizens to observe social distancing. And also pleased to say that we um, pinned 24 new police officers this past Friday, and they are now on the streets. It is during these difficult times that we see the professionalism and the dedication of our city employees. Our employees, our associates are our most valuable asset, and we are grateful for their dedication and their professionalism now more than ever, and we are now compensating them for this extraordinary effort during this extraordinary time. The city's leadership and budget team has worked quickly and diligently to ensure we're maintaining a balanced city budget, financially supporting our people now, and avoiding future layoffs or furloughs. This is due to the city's decades-long practice of conservative budgeting and maintaining a healthy fund balance, contingency, and reserves. Pat Monahan, our city manager, has signed an administrative order to implement hazard pay for most city employees from April the 12th through May the 29th of $2.50 per hour, which equates to about $100 a week um, for those employees that are actually um, on-site working. That exempts the uh, city council, mayor and alderman. It exempts the city manager, the city clerk, and the city attorney. Uh, but everyone else is eligible for it, provided they're working at work. Our sanitation department is currently not collecting residential yard waste, but we are working on a plan to pick it up. We have contacted a waste hauler we use to collect hurricane debris 
to alleviate some of the yard trash that is starting to pile up. We are looking at pricing for one or two collections while city pickup is suspended. Last week I had the opportunity to visit Candler Hospital and Memorial Health to personally thank the healthcare professionals and those other professionals that support them um, in dietary, uh, in environmental services, in maintenance, uh, in purchasing for the extraordinary work that they are doing to manage during these extraordinary times. For what I've observed and what I've been shown, our healthcare community is prepared and ready to meet the challenges of the days ahead, as long as they are not overwhelmed by a deluge of positive cases. Last week, I also visited Hunter Army Airfield to view their mobile testing operation. They are testing their active duty soldiers, their dependents, and their retirees. They have taken extraordinary measures as well to protect our soldiers and their families, many of which are in some stage of active deployment. These are our modern day heroes, the healthcare professional, the soldier, the truck driver, the bus driver, the police officer, the firefighter, the sanitation worker, the city employee, the child care provider, the interpreter, the members of the media. So we continue to thank all of you for what you're doing. The more we stay apart now, the sooner we will be back together. And hopefully we're using this time to really appreciate the, the presence of each other. I think this, this, this quiet time really creates opportunities for us to be grateful for them things we have. We have young people who couldn't wait to get out of school but now can't wait to get back to school. We have parents who want to see their kids more and now they just wish their kids could go somewhere. Uh, we have parents who, who thought that teaching was easy until now they have to do homeschool and they find out that it's not. We have families that um, you know, weren't as close as they were but all of a sudden are now finding the need to be physically uh, connected. So this, this, this time, this unique time in our history has taught us some very unique lessons. And certainly I've recognized the importance uh, of, of the people that, that work for us, the people who serve for us, um, and really just the necessity uh, of just being in the presence of people. I think God has created us uh, to be together. And I think this time apart has made us recognize just how important that is. And really, ultimately, um, as bad as things are, just how blessed Savannah still is. Um, it's bad. It's challenging. It's concerning. But yet, we can still be so much, so much worse. So soon, uh, we'll be in contact with the media. We want to protect you as well. And we'll be exploring other avenues in which to hold these types of briefings. I want you to be okay. I need you to be okay as well. I'm glad all of y'all got on mass, so you protected me. I appreciate that. Um, and city council will soon resume its work um, by holding our workshops on Zoom. We already established a priority schedule. And so we'll be working with the city manager and council so we can go ahead and get back about the business of our city. And I thank our, our members of our council uh, for continuing to be diligent, um, to continue to be out there, to continue to advocate uh, on behalf of all of our citizens. Um, and I will tell you that because they have been so out there, because they've been so accessible, because they've been so diligent, people ask them questions about things we have no idea about. We do not know when you're going to get your stimulus check. We don't know if you're eligible to get a stimulus check. We don't know about food stamp payments. We don't know about um, your landlord um, tenant issues. Um, but yet people will contact us because they realize that we're accessible and we're available. Um, so I will tell you that our, our council members will do the best they can to get that information. But there are also other elected representatives um, whose job is to help provide you that information. And we're hoping that they will do that. So. We will continue to keep the faith, but we will also continue to follow the science. So with that being said, may God bless you, and may God continue to bless the city of Savannah. That ends my prepared remarks, and I will entertain any questions at this time.
question on, um, at this point, do you know how many restaurants have closed and how many of those owners have received any kind of help from the Small Business Association? We have not the slightest idea. Um, again, for us, um, the challenge has been when, when the governor came forth with his order, it was harder for us to track it. So, um, you know, we manage it where we can. Um, we know that uh, it was confusing at first from the business owners I heard from in terms of the paperwork and that local banks had to be ramped up to that. Um, but we will try to see if we can get some type of report if we're taking advantage of that. We know some people have gotten their stimulus checks, though. We've heard that. Um, it's got it's got uh, progressively better, I think, throughout the week. Um, actually, for the last two weeks, I think it's gotten better. Um, people have made a big issue about the drones. Um, the fact of the matter is, we've always had the drones. Um, you know, the fact is, when you have a premier police department, when you have a state of the art police department, um, these are um, crime fighting tools. And so, in the terms of officer safety, uh, we have this technology that we're able to deliver a message while protecting that officer. Um, and we're able to cover a lot more ground. Now, there are rules um, as, as they operate to protect privacy. Um, and so in accordance with the Federal Aviation Administration, we're going to continue to follow those rules. Um, so you should expect to see a drone looking through your front window. I mean, you know, and they're, they're, I've heard people all over the country, you know, we're being tyrants, we're doing big brother. No, we're operating within the law. The law allows us to do that. And, and the fact of the matter is this. Again, we are in the middle of a... Um, health emergency, a uh, medical emergency, um, a state of the order emergency here in our community. So um, we're going to use whatever um, methods are at our disposal. Um, that happens to include drones. That happens to include horses. That includes um, police officers on, on scooters and bikes um, to be able to engage people where they are and try to break up some of these things. Again, we're trying our best to be able to stem that tide. Um, as long as we keep it manageable, um, we're still about two weeks behind uh, New York, we estimate. Um, so again, for us, it's important to kind of keep that tide going. So when the uptick happens, we're able to not overwhelm our health uh, capabilities. I think um, something to note about that, Mayor, is that the drone wasn't your first answer, and all of these tools you had to bring in weren't the first an wasn't the first answer. So can you kind of talk about? I mean, what took? What got the city to this point of having to do this? I mean, people are complaining about it, but you obviously feel like you need to use these tools to get people to social distance themselves. Well, I mean, the truth of the matter is, is that that's, this is the governor's order. I mean, we are enforcing the governor's order. Um, again, I'm proud of our police department. I'm proud of our fire department. And this is really what our citizens pay for. Um, they pay for um, state-of-the-art technology. We don't own a helicopter. We, we, we co-op one. Uh, with Chatham County. Uh, we use these drones for rescue, search and rescue, um, for a variety of purposes. And, and so people hear what they want to hear. Um, people need somebody to be mad at um, because we're in this situation. So if they want to be mad with me, you know, hey, I signed up for it, be mad at me. Um, but the reality is, is that we're going to do what is necessary to keep people safe. Because on the flip side about that, if we don't, then we're, we're also criticized that we didn't do enough to keep people safe. I sleep well at night recognizing that um, our city is using all the tools in our arsenal, all of them, um, from officers walking up to people uh, to our multi-agency uh, task force that is going into businesses and saying, hey, you're not supposed to do this. Um, we're we're going to use all those tools. Um, again, to me, it's way bigger than drones. It's really the end product of keeping Savannah's numbers down. And that's all I'm really concerned about. And my other question for you is, do you have any update about um, the homeless population here in Savannah and what the city is doing to protect them? We, um, we're we still working, I think, diligently to be able to do two things. Um, one, to um, identify and staff up, um, or infrastructure up and staff up a, a not only a temporary solution that will lead to a, a longer-term solution. I don't know if you have any Can you do? Okay. social distancing. I won't touch your stuff, I promise. Thank you. Uh, just to let the media know, uh, the city has started working with the homeless authority to distribute MREs, which are the little packaged meals to the homeless camps, 
that distribution will begin today. In addition to that, the uh, city is work, working with the Trade Center Authority on meal preparation for the homeless camps. Uh, provide both breakfast and lunch, uh, approximately 400 a day, which the Homeless Authority will also assist in the distribution. In addition to that, the city is, will start working. We've been trying to advance as quickly as possible the schedule on, uh, on, temporary, on temporary housing, basically their tents, but we are going to provide cots, uh, up to 200 of them, both to help quarantine the, the homeless, but also to provide overflow for any homeless. But as the mayor said, that is the first phase of a longer term solution that's going to look at creating uh, more permanent housing at these sites. So the city will start work on one in particular that I think the media covered a couple weeks ago, but there are others that the city is also considering. So yes, that work is ongoing. The city is also looking at improved coordination among all the homeless agencies and working with the homeless authority to that extent. Now, have there been any talks of, um, again, uh, porta potties? I know that was a big concern. Yes, so when this new camp's created, it will include porta potties, it will include portable showers, and it will include meals, so that all the basics, uh, housing, food, shelter, will be made available at that site. But in addition, as I mentioned, we are going out to a lot of the camps and doing food distributions not only through the MREs, but through prepackaged meals with the Trade Center Authority. We're just trying to get to a final menu and a, an affordable price. And that will be reimbursed by FEMA. So or at least 70% uh, of it plus the 12% that the state of Georgia will reimburse. The, so the city's out-of-pocket expense will be minimal. And is there any idea of a timeline of when that camp could be reopened? Uh, we have been trying to price, unfortunately, in this day and time, and it's still difficult to find subcontractors. We got, uh, we've had two take a look at the site and give us proposals. Uh, they, I, I told them to pull the trigger. As soon as they're ready, let them go. Uh, the price is affordable, but uh, it's, just, it's, try, it's difficult trying to get subcontractors and contractors working this day and time. They also have to obey social distancing requirements, uh, and they also are finding difficulty finding workers. A lot of folks don't want to work this time of year. Anything else? And so, you know, I, I think I guess the blessing in this is that this is um, creating opportunities for us to really more aggressively and proactively address issues of homelessness. Um, I think for us, we don't want to make it a, a moment. We want to make it a movement. And so if we're able to put enough infrastructure in place, we're able to transition not only a, a temporary situation into a much more permanent solution. Um, and, and as the city manager said, and I've insisted, um, I think that our homeless agencies have to work better in concert with each other. We know that there is some more money coming from the CARES Act um, uh, to this community. Um, so we, we need them to be much more coordinated and comprehensive as it relates to a plan. Um, we cannot, it doesn't benefit us to have people working um, in, in, with working in different silos. It really needs to come together. So we're using, I think, the collective strength of the city to bring that together. The other thing that um, has actually been on my mind um, and been working with our federal partners with, um, as you know, with the, um, the stimulus package, so to speak, um, it only affects, well, it's given directly to cities over 500,000 people. That's the challenge for us. There is not one city in Georgia that is 500,000 people. And I don't believe there's one in South Carolina with 500,000 people, which means that it goes to the state and then the state divvies it up to cities. We believe, just like we do with CDBG funds, HUD funds, and a variety of other funds, that we know best what to do um, with these funds. And so um, we would like to, we're working again with the National League of Cities, um, the U.S. Conference of Mayors, um, and a variety of other groups of really being able to create a opportunity for these funds to come directly uh, to cities. Um, the whole state of Georgia loses out um, in this situation because, again, we don't have a city in Georgia that is a half a million people. This benefits northern states um, and states in the west. Um, and, again, people like cities like Savannah, um, which is a decent-sized city, again, would have to go through another bureaucratic process to be able to get those funds. We need those funds quickly, um, and we have a way to distribute them because we know locally what our needs are. And so, therefore, we need, um, we're going to need some federal help to help make that happen. And, uh, Mr. Mayor, we've gotten some concerns about the Coastal Transitional Center, which I believe is in the city limits.
complaints about some virus cases. I think it's managed by the state, but have you heard anything about this? And are you getting any information from the state about this facility? I'm hearing about everything. Um, I'm hearing about everything. Um, and again, you know, in this case, we have to stay in our lane. The Coastal Transitional Center is a state institution operated by the Department of Corrections in the state of Georgia. Um, therefore, you know, it's, it's their issue. I mean, we have no right to come in and say anything, but I've heard from um, parents and loved ones there. Um, you know, every now and then I'll hear about a um, positive case in, in not only this place, but other places as well. And again, at their state facilities, there's really nothing we can do about it. Um, I've advised those loved ones to contact the health department, which is also another state agency. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you all again so much. We appreciate what you're doing. Um, Mrs. Zola will be in contact with you about how we'll play this for next week. Um, but y'all take care of yourselves, okay? Thanks. Clean those cameras. Thank you. Thank you. And, of course, that has been Savannah Mayor Van Johnson for the last several minutes updating uh, the city uh, about the efforts, people who live in the city, about the efforts to control and uh, prevent the spread of coronavirus. Among the things he talked about, first up, he says that he believes there are actually more deaths and more cases in Savannah than are being reported. He says he is actually asking the state to start to release uh, those cases and those deaths by zip code so that uh, Savannah city leaders can better know exactly where these things are happening. He says the more tests they get performed, the more positive cases seem to show up. But on a more positive note, the mayor also said he is very pleased right now to see more people out and about now at least wearing face coverings and masks. And he says uh, that uh, that he believes is helping slow the spread of coronavirus. He also says, though, that even in the park, something that's been a problem here in the city uh, for the last several weeks, uh, he says is improving even in city parks. He is now starting to see more people maintaining that social distance. Even so, he said the city is and will continue to use drones that to have a pre-recorded message flying them over the parks reminding people to keep their distance and he says even though some people have complained about those drones uh, and uh, how disruptive they say they are uh, to them trying to enjoy these parks he said it is right now a very necessity a uh, very necessary thing to make sure people maintain again that social distance he also says city workers are now going to get um, hazard pay uh, for the risk they incur just by coming to work these days. Uh, not a lot of new information as far as uh, big changes coming out of this news conference, but definitely uh, an update with some information worth passing along to you today. We now